You come with me to a premium job. You need to know about Jonagu in Kyoto, as this is my favorite place to see weeping plum blossoms in Japan. They usually bloom a little bit earlier than the cherry blossoms at the stunning shrine in Japan. This was literally... So you've probably heard that March in Japan is cherry blossom season and it's currently mid-February here in Osaka. And from mid-February to mid-March, the plums blossom right before the sakura do. Apparently there's this beautiful shrine in Kyoto with lots of weeping plums. And since it's only a one hour train ride to get from Osaka to Kyoto, we're going to go see if the plum blossoms are in bloom yet. <laughs> Oh, you can already see. <laughs> we just got to Jonangu. It's not open yet. It's like 7.30 in the morning right now. We just came to suss it out. It opens at 9 a.m. Apparently people are lining up before it opens. There's no one here yet, but... It's blooming, all right. You can already see it over the fence. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It was quite easy to get here. We took the JR line. We took an express from Osaka towards Kyoto and we hopped on a bus which took about 15 minutes and then it was like a, it was like a two minute walk. It was pretty easy but if you do want to come here early in the morning just be aware that it is peak traffic and it might get a bit busy but yes it has started raining unfortunately but maybe that'll deter people so we will get less crowds who knows we'll see what happens. It's not raining too bad. <laughs> It's 7.47 a.m. Do you see those people with the umbrellas? They're lining up for entry, which opens at 9 a.m. Yeah. Oh my god, this is really Japan. We're going in 10 minutes before it even opens. Thank you. There's no English one. Okay. Definitely not as crowded as I thought it would be, but I mean, it is a Monday, so if you're gonna come weekday is probably a good bet. This is my first time in Japan in the spring. I never really understood what the hype was. I mean, sure, the photos are pretty, but I didn't understand why people came here from all over the world en masse for this. But I get it now. It's otherworldly. It feels like it shouldn't be real, like it shouldn't exist. And this isn't even the cherry blossoms. Now I'm worried that my expectations are going to be too high for when they arrive next month. Anyway, these plum blossoms are in bloom from mid-February to mid-March. So you can come here, which I do recommend, or there will be heaps of other places throughout Kyoto and Japan to view them. It is important to note that this place was 1,000 yen entry, um, which is a bit on the pricey side compared to like other similar shrines. Even like Kiyomizu I think it's like 600 yen. I mean, I'd say it's worth it. Anyway, this day must have been going too well for us because the universe decided to give us an L in the form of the cafe we wanted to check out was closed. Oops. Okay, heading towards the next cafe. Hopefully this one's open. But if that hadn't happened, we probably wouldn't have discovered this hidden gem of a cafe. does soy based pizzas as well as 100% buckwheat soba noodles so we've got one of each of those and we've got a couple of coffees as well that they recommended kind of like gives that like a vintage british wintery christmas vibe like you'd expect the whole place to smell like cinnamon eggnog or something like that but it doesn't obviously but then it's got like sprinkled little bits of tradition in japan so it's a really interesting place this is fukufuku coffee this is so cute, get ready for this. Fuku 
Africa blend, original blend once featured in Tahiti. This coffee will make you happy. The pizza came with a chicken mince topping, which was a new flavor for me. I could not have imagined what sweet teriyaki style chicken mince on pizza would have tasted like, but the dough was incredibly fluffy. Then came the soba noodles, with a whole lot of sides. There were two dipping sauces, one to be mixed with grated daikon, the other with grated yam. I love cold soba, but 100% buckwheat noodles means there's no regular flour in them, which can be quite difficult to prepare. These tasted fantastic though, they had a fabulous chewy texture. I added the quail egg, which I have never had before, to the grated yam dipping sauce, as well as this super tasty spicy pickled plum mystery spread. Unfortunately, I feel like the flavour diluted a little too much in the dipping sauce. I would have liked to feel the kick of that spicy pickled plum a bit more. The noodles also came with this simmered herring, which was oh my god to die for. All in all, such a unique experience. I'm so glad I went. Next we went to Cert Coffee Roasters. The vibe was a mix of a modern cafe with traditional tatami mats. I think this place is known for its nut rimmed lattes and the matcha cheesecake, but we opted for regular black coffees, which were a whopping 1300 yen each. That's 13 Australian dollars. I was legitimately expecting a whole jug of coffee to appear. You can taste that like fruity aftertaste, but it's a little bit acidic for me. Although I like that it's a light roast. Colombian whoosh whoosh. Cognac pineapple plum. It's similar, not as fruity as this one. Again, a bit too acidic for me. This is a drip coffee, but I reckon these would both be quite nice as lattes. Which one do I like better? I don't know. This one's got more fruity flavour. I do like the fruitiness, but I like the caramelly tones of this one. So, I like both of them. Is it worth $10 each? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Next we thought we'd swing by Japan's most powerful family's Kyoto residence for a cup of tea. Originally Samurai's, this house was a villa for the Mitsui family that you can now explore as well as have a cup of matcha green tea and some snacks while sitting in the tea ceremony room overlooking the garden. I had some chocolates with my matcha, while Kay had a Japanese sweet. The bitterness of the matcha just hits different when it's consumed with a confectionery. And it was so peaceful sitting inside and listening to the rainfall. Bye. It's currently mid-February. <laughs> And since it's only a one, <laughs> we're gonna go see if we <laughs> Let's do that one more time. 